Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Anil Joshi. Welcome you to my series that is Learn Radiology with Dr. Anil Joshi. Today's lecture topic is radiological approach to COVID-19. That is the imaging part and we are going to have it in two parts. Today is a part 1 as well as we are going to have part 2. Part 1 will essentially deal with some theoretical aspect, some clinical aspects and some differential diagnosis. And part 2 is entirely devoted towards different patterns by ct different patterns by x rays how to interpret them and how to come to a conclusion and how specific are really the patterns of covid that is caused by the radiological investigation mainly ct or x ray we are also going to see has any role there for conventional x ray which is usually considered as outdated but here we are going to see really in the management of covid patients x rays where it plays it plays a role uh, if it is judiciously used yes definitely it has got a role and that indications we are going to see and we are also going to see how judiciously if x rays can be used can avoid a spiral ct expenses as well as radiation now to start with we are going to have certain disclosures a lot of material has come from our own day to day world all the images and patients what we have seen and what we have reported are included in this series however some theoretical aspect is taken from the net which is royalty free and without any uh, financial cost so we thank all of them from where the material has come though the source is not known now here we go to part 1 part 1 is going to be mainly a theoretical aspect of uh, covid disease that is covid 19 virus then we are going to also have some consideration what is the differential what are other viruses which comes near it and how to differentiate their imaging appearances how to come to a diagnosis how a x ray helps in management of all these how a ct scan helps in the management and when x ray is indicated and when ct is indicated now for that we should really know what the covid-19 infection that is covid-19 viruses now this is going to be a general aspect as far as covid-19 viruses are concerned now covid-19 usually presents with fever that is 85% and cough that is 70% shortness of breath 43% however normal abdominal symptoms are possible or this is can be asymptomatic a lot of often time we have seen that only drop in oxygenation was the only presentation of the patient and there were no constitutional symptoms no fever no cough no short of breath that is breathlessness neither any abdominal symptoms overall mort- mortality is 2.3% in some series however this series differs from places to places from country to country and from institute to institute whatever we are showing is what is available from the net and that is average but as the days are progressing this uh, statistic is definitely improving now mortality is no more 2.3% it is less than that now illness severity can vary from mild to critical now all management on radiological investigation which we are going to ask depends on what is the severity of the disease whether it is mild symptoms or it is critical whether there is any comorbidity whether there are any associated findings on ct or on x ray that needs to be considered along with clinical setup now when mild we call when there are no symptoms or there is just non specific symptoms like mild coughing mild fever which are not specific of the covid 19 infection the severity we mean dyspnea hypoxia or lung involvement is more than 50% now critical are respiratory failures shock and multi organ failures so this is the broad division in which the categories of the patient are made come to etiological consideration it is divided again into two one thing is respiratory features and second are the vascular features now depending on these two there will be imaging patterns produced on the images or on the films 
Now let us first come to the respiratory features. That is airway inflammation, consolidation, diffuse alveolar damage and vascular features like congestive changes, vasodilatation, etc. These are all respiratory features. Now let us come to what are the vascular features. Now microthrombosis, vascular dilatation, microvascular angiopathy with microthrombosis, pulmonary hemorrhages and capillaritis or endotheliitis. Now these are the two type of manifestation that is respiratory and secondary vascular and what ultimate we are going to see on the image is the combined or combined effect of these two. Now let's come to a clinical feature. Now incubation period of this virus is varies between 1 to 27 days. The recovery time is around 3 weeks to 6 weeks. Signs and symptoms of the patient include fever as we said, the statistic differs from place to place, from center to center, tough, myalgia, fatigue, shortness of breath, etc. Now these again are very very non-specific symptoms and often they are neglected thinking that this may not be or this may be just a routine viral infection. Now, how people catch the infection? People can catch COVID-19 from others. So the source of COVID virus to get contaminated is from one person to the another person. Now, if they breathe in droplets from a person with COVID-19, that is if the droplet are having COVID-19 infection viruses and if it is inhaled by the person from a person who coughs out or who exhales a droplet which will land on the object or surfaces around the person. Now with sneeze the droplets are airborne up to 10 feet after which they fall on the ground. Now for this reason it is important to stay more than 1 meter that is 3 feet away from the affected person and when somebody is sneezing, he has to take care that it will not directly spread the infection. He has to cover his mouth with the handkerchief and see that the, it will not go directly into the air. Because as I told you, it travels 10 feet in the air. The viruses are alive for at least 12 hours in a droplet form. Therefore, though this infected soap fabrics, it can be infectious for 12 hours. It may happen that person uses certain things like uh, soap, clothing or uh, napkins and within 12 hours if somebody uses same then they are likely to get the infections because the survival rate of this organism on such thing is more than 12 hours. But, however, one thing to remember is the laundry detergent will kill it. So easiest way to sterilize your mask is either by the laundry treatment or to use a hot iron that will kill the uh, viruses. Now washing hand after 5 to 10 minutes can be infectious. Why? If we wash hand after 5 to 10 minutes it can be infectious because in meanwhile if eyes are rubbed or nose is picked unwillingly. So that will happen when bacteria or sorry viruses are on your finger and they will, you will infect yourself with the help of these uh, or these viruses will in, get into your respiratory tract because you can unknowingly rub your nose or you can touch your mouth. Now we have to see a differential diagnosis. The symptoms of the early stages of disease are non-specific as we have seen. Differential diagnosis include the possibilities of wide range of infectious and non-infectious disease like vasculitis, then uh, dermatomyositis and respiratory disorders. Then adenoviruses are also in a differential diagnosis. Then there is influenza viruses, then human meta that is meta pneumoviruses, then is the para influenza and respiratory syncytial viruses RSV then rhinoviruses that is a common cold are also the viruses which can mimic the symptoms 
same as that of the COVID-19. Now, COVID-19 compared to other common conditions, let us compare them. As far as symptoms are concerned, we are comparing COVID-19 with common cold, that is flu and allergies. So these are our three comparisons. Now, fever is common in COVID-19, rare in common cold, flu it is common and allergies it is sometime. Now, dry cough is common with COVID-19, then uh, mild cold it, in uh, common cold it is mild in flu it is common and allergies it is sometime the shortness of breath is common in covid 19 it is not seen in common cold it is not seen in flu and it is also common in allergies now headache sometime in covid 19 you see rare in common cold common in flu and sometime in allergies the aches and pains are covid 19 sometime then common cold common, flu common and allergies no. Sore throat, COVID-19 sometime, common cold common, flu common and allergies no. The fatigue in COVID-19 is sometime, common cold sometime, then flu sometime it is very common and allergies it is sometime. Then diarrheas are rare in COVID-19, then common cold it is not there the flu it is sometime and allergies it is not there then running nose are rare in covid 19 it is in common cold running nose is common then flu it is sometime and allergies it is again common then sneezing covid 19 there is no sneezing sneezing is very common with common cold flu do not have sneezing and allergies also it is common so if we compare the symptoms of COVID-19, common cold, flu and allergies, we find a lot of similarities in them. So that's why it is very difficult to differentiate between uh, these conditions. The diagnosis to be made, the symptoms are overlapping. So in that case, what to do is we have got certain protocols to follow. The diagnosis is made by positive PCR test, which has high specificity but has a lower sensitivity. Then we'll have to go in a history if there is any travel history to endemic countries in within the countries in the high infectious rate of the population where we have got a lot of COVID patients. If somebody goes in that area, then again we can suspect. If he catches the symptoms, though they are overlapping, this PCR has to be done. Now in CBC, we have leukopenia. It is seen in 30 to 40 percent of patients, and lymphocytopenia is seen in 85 of the patients. Check next day. Yes, we can try it because it is cheaper and easier with 60 percent sensitivity. Most important thing is when we take the chest X-ray, whether it is taking in very early stage then we may be having some deceptive findings. So patient catches infection, patient is symptomatic and after how many days we take the X-ray is also a very important factor. Now CT chest scan that is HRCT is 95% sensitive, it is low specific. CT has a higher sensitivity but lower specificity and can play a role in diagnosis and treatment of the disease. So HRCT has become a very popular mode of investigation because sometimes RT-PCR takes longer time, the report takes longer time. So to take the quick decision, CT, HRCT is again a modality of choice. IgM and IgG combo test for COVID-19 are also described and they have got their curacies as well. Now, what is the specific method for diagnosis of, that is SARS-CoV-2, that is real time, transfers transcriptors that is the RT-PCR test. Now RT-PCR test stands as the gold standard or the highest standard for diagnosis of this infection. Now what is this uh, PCR test? The PCR test is a very specific but has a lower sensitivity of around 65 to 95 percent which means that the test can be negative even if the patient is infected. Another problem is a delay for the test results which can be more than 24 hours while CT results are available right away. 
Now, common laboratory findings in COVID-19 are decreased lymphocyte count, increased CPR and high sensitivity C-reactive protein levels. So these can be supportive, but absolute diagnosis is confirmatory by RT-PCR and HRCT. Now specimen collection. We should know how a specimen is collected. Uh, though it is not part of imaging, yes, we must know it. Uh, the specimen collection is combined nasopharyngeal or oropharyngeal swab. If positive, repeat after three days till it comes negative. So we are going to follow patients for positivity and in this period patient can be infectious. So isolation is must. If negative, repeats after 24 hours. Once negative test, do not say patient is not having COVID-19 infection. So repeat it after 24 hours. If two consecutive time it is negative, okay. If two consecutive time it is negative when repeated after 24 hours, then isolation can be discontinued. This is a very important criteria as far as isolation is concerned and how many days to continue and when to stop it, that is the limitation. And this is given by two consecutive time negative RT-PCR test done in 24 hours. Now, low respiratory specimen is preferred when applicable, but it is not a practical. The practical is the um, pharyngeal swab. So it is more preferred and it is more commonly used. Now, clinical classification. Symptoms are categorized as follows. Mild cases, the majority 81% of the cases, coronavirus disease are in a mild form. And these include all patients without pneumonia or cases of mild pneumonia. That is a pneumonia which is not picked on a chest x-ray, but it is seen on HRCT. Again, HRCT, we got a scoring system. So all these things help us to put patient in a category of mild cases. Now coming to a severe cases. These include patients who suffered from shortness of breath, respiratory frequency more than 30 per minute, then blood oxygen saturation less than 93, and then uh, there are different ratios which gives you the idea that whether patient is in mild form or in severe form. And the last is the critical cases. This include patients who suffer respiratory failure like septic shocks or multiple organ dysfunction and either cardiac renal failure. So these patients are categorized as the critical patients. Now, is there any way to prevent it? No, I'll give, there are some tips which can help to remember or which can reduce the severe, reduce the chances of infection. That is wash your hands with soap then uh, do not touch eyes or nose and mouth frequently, especially after touching some objects which are likely to be infected or after coming in contact with the patients. Before you sanitize your hand, before you wash your hands, please see that you will not touch your eyes and noses. Use face mask. That is must, must, you have to use a face mask. Then stay at home. So don't get infected because of the crowding because of the infected material. So best is to stay home and avoid mass gatherings because the distance as we have discussed just now may not be 10 feet and work on home. That is the another solution in which you can prevent the infections or you will get less in contact with the infected material. Then there are some myths about the coronavirus. The myths are only Elderly persons are at risk. It's not a fact. It's not a fact. Earlier it was thought that those who are in a senior age group are having more affinity or likely to get infected. But nowadays it is proved that right from newborn, nobody is immune to it. And nobody can say that the disease is only in adults or that is elderly. Now children, cannot get COVID-19, again a misnomer. Yes, children can get, even the newborn can get, anybody can get COVID-19. Everyone with COVID dies is another a myth. It is absolutely a myth because as we have seen, the death rate is less than 2%. 
less than 2%. So 98% of the people are surviving. And most of the people who have got comorbidity are getting succumbed. And there is good recovery for the healthy people with good immune response. Now face masks always protect against the coronavirus or in fact a distance and the face mask are the two important essentials to uh, protect yourself but not that if you wear a mask you will not get coronavirus it's not a fact so face mask always protect against coronavirus is a myth is a misnomer in spite of wearing face mask also you can get but the chances are less chances of getting corona are less now antibiotic kills coronaviruses it is again not a fact there are no antibiotics which can kill coronaviruses now parcels from china can spread coronavirus is also a myth then drinking alcohol reduces the risk of infection is a myth because the viruses are in the throat and even in spite of uh, alcohol what is consumed in a percentage is not lethal for the bacteria now treatment for the mild cases for your treatment that is the antihistaminics analgesics and whatever are the uh, usual remedies for the constitutional symptom now moderate cases we are giving here different drugs now these are different drugs and as per the severity they are used but these regimes differ from center to center and clinicians are best people to speak on that rather than a radiologist so we are leaving it just for, as a information and we are leaving this for everyone to go through their own institutional chart and to Uh, get the information from their clinical friends as to which medicines are advised because the trends are changing every month the new drugs are getting introduced and every month there are some changes in the regime now let us come to the diagnosis of covid covid can be diagnosed as we have seen first is hrcd now hrcd then is by the chest x ray and then is by rt pcr till now we have seen how a rt pcr is done what are its accuracies when it should be done how it should be done and how to interpret it if it comes positive also and if it comes negative also that all we have seen just now then there are some rationals so let's go through the early radiological rationals virus has entered body via the respiratory tract now they causes pneumonia with distinct pattern corona pattern of pneumonia is very distinct and these lectures are meant for it today we are going to see more in detail the theoretical aspects and two important signs and in lecture 2 we are going to have a film reading session and uh, a typical pattern as well as the mix pattern as well as what can be in addition to the covid virus infective patterns in the x-rays or it can be in ct that will be covered in a part 2 so as far as pneumonia is concerned on ct it has got distinct pattern and on x-ray it has got fairly distinct pattern then complicated by thrombosis and other vascular phenomena can alter a typical appearance so we should also remember that there can be a vascular cause as well as a pulmonary cause now these two causes the lesions now how they cause is going to see in a subsequent lecture now classification of severity is limited now ct is only for detection of complications but why does covid 19 cause a distinct pattern of changes in the lungs because of two things one thing is its pathogenesis now let us go into that detail in two steps first step is the vascular features how a vascular feature contributes towards a typical covid-19 infection so it is micro thromboembolic disease so it is visible filling defects on ctpa in covid-19 this is peripheral so main lobar and pulmonary artery affection is around 17% 
then lower the volume then extensive then associated with lung changes and rv lv ratios decreased by 26% that is the characteristic features of covid-19 infection now how a non covid-19 patterns differs now non covid they are central mainly lobar and pulmonary artery involvement is 47% so it is more then there is higher volume then uh, lesser extensive non covid in, uh, 19 infections and fewer associated with lung changes and rv lv ratios decrease to 49% so please go through all these things again then how a covid 19 and non covid 19 differs as far as micro thromboembolic phenomena or pathogenesis is concerned now come to the radiological aspect that is the vascular tree in bud opacification now what is the mechanism is slightly not clear till now then is it micro thrombosis yes the work is going on and possibly it is on that line and micro vascular angiopathies is quite likely and it present in 64% of the patients now only described previously in context of the tumor thrombosis now after that it has come back to the covid-19 imaging now here we are seeing a tree bud appearance same appearance we are going to appreciate when we are going to do a film reading session when we are going to see the films we are going to see different patients how the disease has manifested this will be again covered now what is the imaging strategy we have got two things we have got a xray also we got hrct also so how, what is imaging strategy imaging of covid 19 the it should be focused on chest radiography as a first line then ct in specific situation then in bed side portable ultrasound in adjoint and it is it is advised that avoid unessential imaging and transplantation to the radiology department so again we'll see imaging of covid 19 patient should be focused on okay we have got chest x ray we got ct scan and we got bed side ultrasound now was if patient cannot be shifted to radiology department we want bed side ultrasound also we got portable x ray also so essentially the focus depends on what is the patient's clinical status and what is its grading that is mild moderate severe or uh, more than that accordingly the investigation radiologically will differ and in that most important is patient transportation to radiology department should be avoided continuing further the use of x rays in covid 19 positive patients the chest x ray is indicated in patients with moderate to severe symptoms at as a baseline chest x ray can be performed in mild cases if there are risk factors for developing severe diseases such as other risk factor is the age more than 63 cardiovascular disease the patient is having then the patient has got diabetes and a patient is immunocompromised so this should be imaging strategy when you take the plain x ray then these thing need to be considered and also chronic liver or kidney disease that is comorbidity needs to be considered so even if patient has got mild symptoms but if patient has got all these risk factors like age more than 63 cardiovascular disease diabetes or immunocompromised patient chronic liver kidney lung diseases now here we must be careful in selecting a investigation of choice now is it that all findings are seen in covid 19 infection the reason is some findings are seen some findings are not seen now which are the findings seen we have seen till now what are the findings not seen let's see them pleural effusion is not a feature of covid 19 infection but we do see it in the patients of covid 19 pleural effusion we have to think of causes other than covid 19 infection cavitation again 
is not a feature of COVID-19 infection. It is more of some other diseases which we are going to see when we are going to see the film reading session. In that we got a lot of cases where there are fibrosis, cavitation, calcifications, consolidation, CTC. Then pulmonary nodules are not seen in COVID-19 infection. Then lymphadenopathy have not been reported. It is not seen. If we are seeing it, it is because of some other diseases. Think of them. So here we are seeing what type of lesions are seen. What type of lesions which are not seen. Both are equally important. And now let us go to the real findings on chest X-ray. Now what chest X-ray shows? It's a standard radiography examination of the chest has a low sensitivity and underlying early lung changes. It can be completely normal in initial stages of the disease. So what you have to consider how many days patient has got symptoms. If the symptoms are too short like 2-3 days, be prepared that XHS may be normal. So if patient is saying he has got symptoms for 5-7 to seven days, Yes, we can get some changes on the chest X-ray or in other words, if chest X-ray is not showing any changes, do not mean that patient doesn't have COVID-19. In more advanced stages of infection, the X-ray examination commonly shows bilateral, multifocal and lunar opacities which leads to confluence up to the complete opacity of the lung. So these are the stages in which the disease progresses. Initially, you may get groundless appearance. From that, you may get crazy pavings. Sometimes reverse follows at all sign is seen or sometimes you get a consolidation. Now, if these things are seen, be sure that you are not dealing with early stage of disease. So, it is the most information achieved from the X-rays. And pleural effusion can also be demonstrated though it is not a feature of COVID but it can be picked by the Excess. Now here we are seeing patients having mild symptoms. What you are seeing here are the bilateral, symmetrical, ground glass, opacities, basal dominance, laterally situated. So again I will repeat, you can see first it is bilateral, peripheral, dominating lower lobe, ground glass opacities, there is no evidence of pleural fluid, there is no lymphadenopathy, and there is no cavitation. So these are the radiographic features of mild symptoms. If patient symptoms are mild, if patient's oxygenation level is uh, well maintained, well, the management is very clear, patient goes for the home isolation. But again, this protocol is not common or not fixed to all. Sometimes it can differ from center to center. Now after mild, it is a moderate. Now here you are seeing the symptoms are getting more. They are more, they are more dense, they are more peripheral, they are more typical of ground glass opacifications and they are not showing any cavitations except one of it shows cardiac changes. So that is a comorbidity. In that you have to think that there is a comorbidity. Though the symptoms are moderate, the grading is done at one stage up that is severe. So, the, except the last film on the that is the R322, the remaining shows the moderate infection. The last one shows a severe because it, the lesions are showing moderate, but since there is comorbidity, since there are cardiac changes, though it is moderate as far as COVID is concerned, for clinical point of view, it should be taken one step up that is the severe symptoms. Now here you are seeing it is extensive, there is cardiac changes, there hardly any lobe of the lung is spared. So extensive bilateral ground glass opacity is situated peripherally without cavitation. Uh, Sometimes they are associated with other lung changes like collapse consolidation like we are seeing in the second film that is the left lower lobe collapse consolidation that is the associated feature or additional feature but the remaining are in favor of severe symptoms. Now come to the second portion that is the HRCD. 
the most favorite now it is used very frequently actually it is used more than what our indications are and we still believe that its use should be done judiciously but most of the time what happens is there is a urgency in starting a treatment and it rt pcr takes a longer time so in that way hrct is preferred because it's the instant report the american college of radiology recommended against chest cts routine use of initial imaging study that is a chest x ray or screening due to high sensitivity now chest computer uh, tomography ct particularly high resolution hr ct is a diagnostic method of choice in evaluation of covid-19 pneumonia particularly when associated with disease progress computer tomography hr ct plays a major role when chest x ray is negative hr ct is done when rt pcr is positive so rt pcr gives a strong indication that patient has got covid-19 xhs is negative so a clinician in diamonema whether to treat patient on the line of covid or not so hr ct is done and second most important indication is when your treatment is going to change drastically so that is the two main indication in addition to there are many other indication which will be seeing just now now several non specific findings and radiographic patterns can be found on chest cts most of them findings may also be observed in other lung infections such as influenza then uh, streptococcus and chlamydia mycoplasma so these are the diseases which can cause similar appearance there are a lot of other viral diseases which can cause also the similar appearances now we'll see here what is the role of uh, chest ct indication for suspected cases then uh, rt pcr negative cases clinical suspicion having uh, uh, covid 19 and there's clinical deterioration in spite of covid suspicion but rt pcr negative you have to go for hr ct then equivocal chest x ray chest x ray is taken high suspicion of covid x ray chest is not showing any specific uh, uh change not saying whether covid is there or not go ahead and do hr ct then emergency situation then emergent surgeries intervention plan so you want to know immediately whether covid patient is covid positive or not go ahead with uh, hr ct then molecular diagnostic is not readily available rt pcr is not available in some centers they can go ahead with uh, hr ct if they have got that can give them a idea whether patient should be treated on the line of covid or not the proven cases ct should be reserved for hospitalization symptomatic patients with specific clinical indication for ct that is when a clinical management is going to change drastically it should be applied now key finding of ct are bilateral peripheral multifocal round glaucoma glass opacities now there can be further progress to crazy paving and consolidation and reverse halo sign this is the stage in which the disease progresses now what are these ground glass opacities now ground glass opacities are hazy increase attenuation of lung but with preservation of bronchial and vascular markings caused by partial filling of air spaces interstitial thickening partial collapse of alveoli and normal expiration or increased capillary blood flow now not to be confused with consolidation in which bronchovascular margins are obscured and may be associated with air bronchogram so in that condition we have to go for the differential diagnosis now this gives you a attenuation values then lung has got attenuation values of minus 900 water has got zero ground glass has got minus 100 to minus 800 so it gives you attenuation different than normally aerated lung then consolidation is up to the 30 hu so that gives you roughly the idea whether it is consolidation ground glass appearance or otherwise now what are the classification of uh, covid-19 infections typical appearance are peripheral bilateral ground glass opacities with or without consolidation 
the multifocal ground glass opacities of round consolidation, then visible intralobular lines that is Christ Z paving and reverse halo signs. Now, determinate appearances are multifocal, diffuse, peripheral, unilateral, ground glass opacity with or without consolidatable, lacking of specific distribution and are not rounded or non-peripheral. So these are indeterminate type of appearances when you, you are not very sure whether they are COVID or otherwise. And atypical are isolated local consolidations, discrete small nodules, string by lung cavitations and pleural effusion. All these things you should clearly mention on your report. Now, what are the missing CD features? Are bronchial wall thickening, then bronchial plugging, tree in bud opacifications, then central lobar nodules are the missing CD features and infrequent that is the rare CD findings are lymph node enlargement, lobar consolidation, cavitation, abscess formation or pleural effusion. By and large, they indicate super infection. Now, what are the typical appearances? Is ground loss opacification, segmental consolidation, bilateral peripheral basal and Later CT findings are worsening conditions, ARDS, effusion, organization pneumonia and fibrosis. Now here we are seeing illustrations. First is round loss, second is crazy paving and third is consolidation with air bronchogram. So these are the three features which we are showing out of which very characteristic for COVID are first two. Now what are the HRCT findings here? What we are seeing? are the ground glass opacification GGO. They are situated peripherally. They are not showing air bronchogram. So multiple bilateral peripheral ground glass opacities without air bronchogram. Right? So this finding is characterized by ground glass areas of superimposed intralobular septal thickening and interlobal septal thickening. It is also non specific finding that it can be detected in different conditions. Now, this finding is characterized by ground glass opacities areas with superimposed interlobal septal thickening and interlobal septal thickening that is a non specific finding that can be detected in different conditions. But here we are showing you a typical COVID-19 patients, same patient, different level cuts. They are showing you multiple ground glass opacities, peripherally situated without air bronchogram with some septal thickening. Again, same finding, some different ways, some different appearance, but the outcome is same, a typical COVID-19 lesion. Here what we are seeing, they are not only peripheral, but they are almost involving entire lung sur surfaces. Now these are the crevy paving as we were seeing then there are some cystic changes or areas of breakdown in addition to crazy pavings. Now the most common CT finding in COVID-19 are multifocal bilateral ground glass opacities and they are replaced subsequently by consolidation and areas of disease with patchy distribution, mainly peripheral, subpleural and greater involvement of the posterior region of the lobes. Here we are seeing mainly consolidative features. The point to appreciate here are the air bronchograms which gives you idea about the consolidation. The most common CD finding here again are multifocal bilateral ground glass areas replaced subsequently by the consolidation and areas of breakdown. Now this is the advanced disease. You can appreciate the patchy distribution, you can appreciate the peripheral or subpleural location. Now these are the different type of uh, CT images, but here what you are seeing is, that is the reverse hollow sign. Now it is the focal area of ground glass, daily mediated by a peripheral ring with consolidation and the finding of cavitation, calcification, lymphadenopathies and pure effusion. These are the crazy pavings, slightly advanced stage of the 
COVID-19. Now this is the vascular features of COVID-9 that is tree bud opacifications. Now lung ultrasound, has any role there for the ultrasound? The answer is yes. Ultrasonic evaluation of the lung allows evaluation of progressive of the disease. Disease progresses can be determined by the ultrasound. Ultrasound can be taken to the bedside. Patient do not have to shift to the or come to the radiology department. So easy, bedside, quickly done and can assess the severity. So ultrasonographic examination of the lung allows evaluation of the progression of the disease from a focal interstitial pattern to a white lung with evidence of subpleural consolidation. Considering its non-invasive nature and zero risk of radiation, it is useful diagnostic modality for patient for follow-up and assessing, determining the settings of the mechanical ventilators and uh, therefore helps in the management and therefore ultrasound is preferred in the ward with serious patient when follow-up is to be done. What are the findings seen on ultrasound? Uh, one is pleural lines. They appear often as thickened, irregular, discontinuous until it makes erratic. And then subpleural lesions can be seen as a small patchy consolidation or nodules. Now there are B lines. B lines, they are often motionless. That is when you put a probe, you see a movement. So B lines are often motionless. They do not move. Coalescent and cascade and can flow up to the square of white lung. So this is the characteristic of the B line. And third is thickening. They are often evident in the posterior and bilateral fields. The dynamic air bronchogram within the consolidation is a manifestation of the disease evaluation. And now then is the perilegional pleural effusion can be picked nicely by the ultrasound. Now we are coming to a reporting aspect of the HRCT patients. Now HRCT, I am going to read a report which should be standardly given. The initially the technique has to describe that is a plain axial high resolution CT scan of the chest was performed with a thin serial contagious sections from the thoracic inlet to the base of the lung and documented in the soft tissues and window and lung window setting. It reveals now lung. Bilateral, diffuse, peripheral lesion, non lobar subpleural distribution, showing ground glass opacities, crazy paving, whatever will be seen has to be mentioned here. Then consolidated changes if there are, they has to be mentioned. Then you have to mention about bronchiectasis, honeycombing, usually they are not there, but no matter, you have to put it as there are no changes. Then Evidence of pleural thickening or effusion bilaterally, if it is there, you have to mention, if not, okay, there is no effusion. No evidence of any enlarged mediastinal axillary supra or retroclavicular lymphadenopathy, tracheobranchial tree is normal, it needs to be mentioned. Because lymphadenopathy is not a feature of COVID. Then mediastinal vascular appears grossly normal on plain scan. So you are by and large. HRCD performed for the purpose of COVID are non-contrast enhanced. Now we have to mention all these things and visualize superior aspect of liver and spleen usually seen. We have to comment some gross things on it if it is seen and ribs okay if possible we should make a mention of them. Now this is the scoring system we consider as a 25% system. So right low if it is 5% then you give us a score as a 1. And this, this is the score you have to give with maximum 25. So 1 to 5 score you have to give. This is the arbitrary example which we have shown you that how a scoring system should be given. Now if such scoring system is given, how a report should go? Findings are suggestive of viral pneumonitis, possibly COVID-19 infection. Level of suspicion is 19, is 4 and 5 is very high. As long as only CT appearances are concerned, we can reach five, the level of 5. The level 6 is only mentioned when RT-PCR is positive, when the case is a proved case of COVID-19. So, if there is no report available for RT-PCR, the 
Goddard system, Goddard score goes as 5. And if it is positive, then Goddard has to be 6. Then CT severity score, again, as we have mentioned, uh, or I have shown you a arbitrary or an imaginary example where it is 5 indicated mild, moderate or severe that we are going to see shortly and there is no evidence of pleural thickening effusion whatever is there so that's how a COVID-19 report should go it should mention about the uh, the level of suspicion and severity that is CTSS, CT severity score now we have also mentioned the duration of symptoms then uh, description of the CT findings then covariance, CT severity findings and a conclusion has to be written. What we have seen just now is the same thing. So what is the level of suspicion? Level of suspicion is how much confident you are in saying it is a COVID-19. It never speaks of the uh, involvement of the lung. Involvement of lung is CTSS and level of suspicion gives you a how much confident you are putting as a COVID. Now what is the uh, coronary 0 is non-interpretable, scan is technically bad, then coronary 1 is very low suspicion. So practically these are not a patient where you are suspecting COVID. COVID 2 again is a low, so again you are not suspecting anything. Coronary 3 onward a COVID report starts. Now coronary 3 what it says is equivocal or it is indeterminate. Now, what it means that features are compatible with COVID-19 or not, we are not very sure. So, Corat 3 is indeterminate. Corat 4 is a high, high suspicion for COVID-19. So, patient has got very high chances that he will have COVID-19. Or if you are finding appearances which are characteristic resembling COVID, then you put it as the Corat 4. Now, Corat 5 is a very high, that is a typical, what we have seen just now, ground loss opacification, etc, etc. If you have got slight doubt, then put it to 4. If you are confident, put it to 5. Corat 6 is given only when RT-PCR is positive, that is in definitely a patient is known case of COVID-19. Now, the involved area in each lobe versus the score. I have shown you in a typical report that is the less than 5% score 1 uh, how the report should go. Now depending on the lobes, now right lobe, right side is divided into upper, middle and lower lobes and left is divided into upper and lower lobes. Each lobe is given 5, that is it is arbitrary. So you will have to give them a grading or you have to score them according to each lobe. So first is right upper then you come to right middle, then you come to right lower, then you come to left upper and then you come to the left lower and you sum up the score. If the involvement of the each lobe is less than 5% or it is around 5% you score as 1. If it is 5 to 25 you give score 2, 25 to 50 you give score 3, 50 to 75 you give score 5 and if it is more than 75 you give score 5. So, depending on that, all the five, you can say as the lobes, are given scoring and that is added and once you add them, then you will go to the final report. So, this need to be mentioned. Now, you have summed the score. If the score is less than 8, you put this as a mildly severe. So, so this CT is severity, CTSS. If it is less than 8, mild. 9 to 15, moderate. More than 15 is a severe cases. So this is how you grade and report a CT scan. CT scan report has to be crucial because it helps the clinician to manage the patients and it should be meticulously and sincerely worked up and it should be given as far as Clearly, it should mention about the all factors which I have told you just now. Now, what is the conclusion? Radiological versus histological correlation for COVID-19 is limited. Wait few days, it will be out. So, as on today, it is a limited correlation between histology and radiology. Then, uh, what required is more distinct correlation that is pre-mortem CT versus 
postmodern histology is awaited as far as uh, time till now is concerned. The distinct phenotypic characteristic detectable with CT CDPA correlation with histology is again is not as good. Then radiological features are not of the respiratory pneumonia, they are different and that we are seeing yeah, how they differ from the routine. Now radiology shows that the vascular ent entities are dominant in acute phase. So in acute phase, the vascular entities dominate. COVID-19 lung disease is a common accurately described radiologically as well as by pulmonary vasculopathy. So it follows fairly believable or fairly reliable pattern by which we can diagnose them fairly accurately on HRCT and to some extent on X-rays. Now we have found that this CT had a low rate of uh, misdiagnosis of COVID-19. This is our conclusion which is not binding on others. Other uh, centers may have some different and may be useful as a standard method for rapid diagnosis of the COVID-19 to optimize the management of the patient. We have found it fairly accurate. When the lesions are detected, when we have reported as the suspicion for the uh, CD, suspicion for the uh, COVID-19, especially CORAD4, then they have really helped the clinicians and has found to be fairly accurate and it is quick also it comes before RT-PCR report. Now CT is still limited for identifying specific viruses and distinguishing between the, the viruses. So pattern can be better analyzed on CT and a differentiation can be made which we have seen in this uh, lecture detail with the help of chart. So with this we have seen many aspects of the COVID. How it spreads, what are the etiogenesis, how it causes the thrombosis or how it causes the tree in bud appearance, how it causes the crazy pavings, how it causes the ground loss opacification. So all these things helps us to diagnose quickly COVID-19 infection. However, we do feel that a clinical examination of patient, a clinical status of the patient is more important and radiological findings support them or clinician should take help of radiologist when he want to change the management or when they want to grade the patient or they want to find out whether in addition to COVID patient has got any other diseases. So radiology plays an excellent role not only for detection of the COVID but also to detect whether there are any other factors which are contributing towards comorbidity. With, with this I thank you for giving me your valuable time. Please note, radiology is not a race, it's a process. Be a part of this and enjoy the feast of knowledge. I am Dr. Neil Joshi, logs off till we meet again. I am sure that I have given you within my capacity some clues, some ideas, some information as to how to diagnose from CT and from XA COVID infections. See more patients, try to correlate the CT findings with the patient, see these CT findings, correlate them with the X-rays and ultimately all these things will increase your own skill as far as patient management is concerned. And that is what is required. So do your best to give your best to the patient so that they will be benefited and more and more patients will recover and the death rate will definitely be there, though it is around 2 now, it should drop to 0%. That should be our expectation. Thank you.